Hey everybody, how's it going? So tonight we're going to do a quick little review on a new slicer um, that's come out. Uh, we were going to do, we're going to depart a little bit from the old Idea Maker series. We're going to do a series on the Orca Slicer. So the Orca Slicer is a fork of Prusa Slicer and the Bamboo Labs Studio. Um, someone's done a fork off of Bamboo. Uh, Soft Fever is the name of it. Is the name of the developer and orca is the name of this particular version of slicer it has a bit more flexibility as far as which printers can work with it so it's not just limited to bamboo printers um obviously because i don't have one i have an ender 3 uh so i wanted to use it and see how it's see how it stacks up um i'm always leery of trying a new a new slicer only because i know idea maker so well i you know i know i know what all the features do and this and that and the other um, so jumping into something new is always a little bit daunting for me because I'm, when I get used to something, I just like to, to use it. Um, but I'm always about trying to improve quality and speed when it comes to prints. Um, so I figured, what the heck, why not? Let's try it. I've seen some good press. I've read some good press. I've seen a couple of reviews on it. Um, so I wanted to check it out. Uh, so here's where you get it. So if you're interested in getting it as well, I'll put this link down in the description, but it's GitHub, Soft Fever, Orca Slicer, and releases. As of today, June 12th, um, it's 1.6.3 is the initial official release right now. If you roll down here to the assets portion, you can just download whatever version, um, extract those files, and uh, in my case, I just left it in the downloads folder. And then in here, you double click Orca Slicer and it pops up. I even went the, the, which is a good sign. I even created a shortcut and put it out to my desktop. Because if I didn't like it, I would have done that. And I would have probably just deuced this whole thing in the recycle bin already. Um, and we never would have made the video. But uh, I actually kind of like it. So we're going we're gonna to keep playing with it. Uh, so once it's downloaded and you open it up, uh, you're going to be asked for a couple different things. So if you're like me and you've got an Ender or not a Bamboo Labs printer, um, you're going to be presented with a screen like this where you can just use one of the generic Clipper or generic Marlin um, profiles here, and then you can modify it with your build volume and speeds and all that good stuff. Otherwise, you've got a whole slew of um, profiles that you can do. So I went ahead and chose this uh, the Creality Ender 3 V2 with a 4 millimeter, 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Now, what I really have is an Ender 3 OG um, with a direct drive extruder uh, and a glass bed and a 0.6 nozzle. Uh, but this is basically um, the closest thing to it. So I tick that box, I hit confirm, and then it's going to ask you which filament profiles you want to use. I just selected uh, PLA and PETG. Those are the things I print with most. So now in order to make some of the changes to match at what my actual machine is, uh, I went ahead and you click this button to edit. And under basic information, I just work left to right in this case. So I did not mess with any of the really the basic information. I left the build volume alone. I didn't mess with anything else. I don't have an auxiliary part cooling fan. So I already have a part cooling fan. But I don't have another part cooling fan. And that's what that tick box does. Um, machine G code. So I did not mess with any starting or ending G code. Uh, if I was in love with my starting and ending G code for my D maker, I could just copy and paste it from there and put it in here. I didn't, so I don't. Or I don't, so I didn't. Um, I did not mess with anything in the motion stuff. I didn't mess with speed, acceleration, jerk. I left it all base where it is. I just kind of wanted to see how this thing was out of the box. Now, on the extruder tab is where I did make some changes. So, obviously, my nozzle diameter, I changed that to 0.6. Um, I left the minimum and maximum layer heights alone. Um, for the most part, I print stuff at 0.2 or 0.24. Um, I did change the default retraction from, I think, a default of five millimeters down to two since I'm running direct drive. Um, and I think that's pretty much where I left everything here. I didn't mess with anything else. From here, you hit the little save icon. And then you move on to your, um, um, your PLA settings or your, your, your filament settings. So you click this little box next to here. Again, I think I left pretty much everything alone. So 1.75 millimeter diameter filament. Absolutely. I changed my minimum and max nozzle temps uh, to 210. That's where I like to print at this point in time. And then I also changed my um, my first layer to 70 degrees C and then everything else after that to 65. I'm using that textured glass bed. So it likes a hot first layer and it likes me even, you know, slightly less hot uh, for all subsequent layers so that when it cools off, it just pops off the, the thing. 
Um, so that's all I changed here. Um, I did not mess with anything on this tab with the exception of saying turn on the fan full and starting at layer two. Did not do any settings overrides. Um, oh, I, well, I just recently did this. But if you have, you want to tweak your base settings from like, in this case, from two millimeter retraction down to one and a half, you can take the box and do that and it'll override it. Um, and I didn't do anything in advanced. So from there, again, you hit save. And now your, your generic PLA template is now in here. And then it was a matter of going through your processing tabs. So layer quality, so quality, so layer, I said 0.24, my first layer is 0.2, always 0.2, no matter what. Uh, and then I changed my line width, so essentially match my 0.6 millimeter nozzle. So anything in here that was either a 0.4 or a 0.5 or a 0.45, I went up the, the, the appropriate amount to basically match what they were doing with a 0.4 nozzle to my 0.6 nozzle. So I changed this to 0.6, to uh, first layer to 0.7, uh, this used to say 0.45, I upped it to 0.65, uh, that was a little bit of a guess, um, but everything turned out kind of good, so I'm not, not kicking myself too bad. Steam position, I told it to put it in the back, um, and everything else I left alone. I didn't mess with any other settings on this tab. Uh, for strength, all I told it was to do three, uh, three walls. Um, I left it at monotonic fill, and I know I needed eight bottom layers, so down here at the bottom. Um, I have zero infill on this part, and that was it. I didn't change anything else. Speeds, I left my first layer stuff alone. The only thing I really changed was my outer and inner walls. I bumped this up to 60s, um, and everything else here, sparse infill in here, uh, you know, 50, 40, 30, I left it all alone. Um, again, I didn't even mess with the travel speed. Like, to me, probably 150, you could probably bump this up to 200, 250, whatever and save a little bit of time so I could probably tweak this a bit more. There's no support on this part so I didn't even mess with it. Um, and from others all I did was add the um, the brim. Um, I've noticed with the glass textured bed I had a couple of uh, times where corners were lift up so I threw a brim down and I don't have that issue anymore. So I threw in a brim. Everything else I left alone. Um, so a little bit about this part. So this part uh, actually sits in this orientation. I print it in this orientation. <clears throat> Saves a lot of time on, you know, not having to do support material and all that good stuff. Now this part was printed uh, using in my idea maker profile. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk into the differences in just a second. But this is the orientation I print this part in. When you have all your settings and you're, you're happy with all your stuff here on the left, you hit slice plate. Um, <clears throat> it will slice for you. And I think one of the nice things here is that you get this sort of detail breakdown of where it's spending its time, um, which I, I, I think is kind of cool. So if you're spending an exorbitant amount of time on, let's say, your brim um, or your bottom surface or something like that, then it gives you the opportunity to say, oh, I'm spending a lot of time on that. Let me go tweak that a little bit because there's some time savings there. So I like that it gives you this detail. Um, total time, two hours and 17 minutes. And I really wanted to check this out because I know that, you know, sometimes slicers aren't always accurate when it comes to time estimates. So like I know Idea Maker tells me that this part is gonna print in I think two hours and 30 something minutes, 36 minutes. And it really prints in two hours and 32 minutes. Now, like I said, I think I print 10 of these a day. Uh, and it's just sort of a rinse and a repeat on my on my um, my SD card using the same idea maker profile and part. So I print about 10 of these a day. I go through a roll of filament just doing this part like every other day. Um, so I print a lot of them. Um, so two hours and 17 minutes is a, is a decent time savings when it comes to it. Um, and uh, so I'll get into that in just a second. When you're done slicing, when you're ready uh, to go ahead and export this, then I go export to G code and then click the button, tell it where you want to save, go print. So the results, so here's the results that I come out with. So again, this gray one, I just, I printed with my idea maker profile, two hours and 32 minutes. Where I don't love what's happening with my idea maker profile, and I've struggled with this a bit. Let me, I'm gonna zoom in here a little, just for a sec, you're gonna look at my big fat face for a second. So you can probably see that in the corners, um, in the corners, over here, um, uh, over here, like near the near this part of the hole, that you know, doing the first layer fill, none of the lines are getting um, 
I don't know how to say it. They're, they're thinly extruded, and they're not connected. Now you can see, though, that as the part traverses the rest, everything's nice and smooth and fine. And it only happens at the corners, and that's where my starts and stops are for those particular layers. And so it has nothing to do with um, build plate level. It is. I know it is. Um, it has everything to do with somehow the start and stop of how I have something set up in my DMX profile. And I've tweaked it and done. Now, I don't really care because I have a part that goes on top of this and no one ever sees this surface. So I kind of don't give a rip about this. It would be nice to figure it out for sure. But for, uh, for this particular part, I have a part that goes on top. No one ever even sees it. So I don't really worry about it. The rest of it prints fine, right? The thing cools off, I pop it off, take the brim off, do what I need to do and, and get it out. Now, this is the one that I printed with um, Orca. Um, none of those issues on the top in the corners, zero. Sorry, probably not all that great. There are none of those issues. I didn't change anything. It's monotonic fill, everything first layer. It's the same speed, first layer, same everything. So whatever it's doing related to flow rate um, and how it, how it controls or handles some of those moves, it's somehow doing it better. So I like that. Uh, and I didn't re-level the bed, by the way. Um, I didn't touch, I, all I did was put in the SD card and change which file I print from. That's all I did. Um, I did, well, it's not completely true. I ran out of black and mid print, I went ahead and paused it and then moved over to the silver. Um, since this is a test part, I kind of really don't care. But everything else, dimensionally, and the way this thing fits together, I have the press fit apart in here, it press fits just fine, no issues. Um, so, and, and it actually printed in two hours and 14 minutes instead of two hours and 17. So it improved by a couple of minutes, not a huge deal, but so two hours and 32 minutes, Two hours and 14 minutes, um, same quality, if not slightly better. Um, the walls, I would say the walls are just as good. I think where I would improve is on the seam. I think the seam is not great and I can do some work. An Orca slicer to, to improve the seam appearance. Uh, my seam is pretty well dialed um, using Idea Maker. I've spent a lot of time doing that. So I will probably tweak it to try and make Orca slicer match the quality seam that I have in Idea Maker. Um, otherwise, it's a good part. It's, it's, dimensionally it's the same. Um, I've measured everything out. Like I said, it, it comes out just fine. So, uh, I'm going to continue with Orca Slicer for a little while. Uh, I'm going to play with this a bit more. I'm going to see how, how much I can optimize this part um, I think if you're looking for a new thing to play with uh, and you want a bunch of good options and advanced settings you can go through and tweak, I think this is a great option for you. Uh, I'm sure there are others in here, uh, other options in here that I have not even begun to mess with yet. Um, so but I, can, I can wholeheartedly recommend the slicer if you want to play around. Um, drop a comment if, you, if you've used it, if you like it, if there's something you want me to see or show or what have you. But um, like and subscribe, and, and we'll do some more videos on this shortly. Thanks, man. See you all later.